All right, so for this guy, um, you want him to have a realistic skin tones, right? I can see you're already using some purples in there. What I recommend to cancel out most of the pinks is using a green. That'll give him that sort of pale, washed out look. That pink look seems to not match the organic colors of his skeleton um, mask of the bird, or his own head actually. Um, what you want to do to cancel all that out is to get a green. Uh, just look at the color wheel, what's the opposite of red, and just get that tone. And similar um, saturation so that you don't overdo it. And just throw that green over everything. And that will cancel out some of the pinks that you have. You have an excess of pinks. Uh, if you have too many pinks, what happens is that when you do need the pinks, which is for hands and fingers, um, you lose the uh, their benefit. So, in order to avoid that from happening, you got to make sure that you're using pinks not sparingly. Basically, all skin tones range from pale orange to pale red. Uh, not red, uh, pale yellow orange. Um, so the reds that are, are that are invested are high circulation areas, areas in the body that have high circulation or um, edges of the circulatory system like the fingers and the hands where the blood is rushing down and rushing up at the same time. So there's like a bit of a traffic there with the blood and that's why the, those areas are usually the reddest. And so what we're when we're looking at um, and a full body painting, you want to make sure that you're always casting a little bit more red onto the fingers and the toes and the nose and the cheeks and the head. Usually the head is redder, but the body, body actually, the, the chest, the legs, usually those aren't as, as, um, as high traffic areas. Similar to the knees, the knees also have are also high traffic areas. So everything else, you just want to give it a pale yellow, a pale yellow look. And you are working a bit light, so I sort of have to work a bit light too. But using that yellow and balancing it out, because the skin is made up of many different colors. There's purples, there's pinks, there's yellows, there's reds, there's greens. Um, so you want to make sure you're using the right amount. I wish you didn't... Um, so I could sort of lasso him out. Oh, there you go. Select inverse. Hide. <clears throat> what I recommend for the skin is not getting so dark on those edges here. Sort of like playing it safe a little bit because you still need to bring in the purples. And the purples uh, work in shadow areas. Basically it's like cooling it down. And when you're working with a yellow, yellow orange base, um, uh, sort of skin tone, you don't go to purple on the other side of the color wheel, you just go down into red. Red has purples in it, and compared to yellow and orange it looks pretty purple. So don't just go straight down into, you see how purple this is? And it's just part of red. We're just getting it from red. So be careful not to uh, to go into the actual purple area of the, col of the color wheel. I'm also going to throw a big um, sort of orange tone over everything as well because we want to balance all these colors out. You've got lots of colors from all kinds of places on the color wheel and it's not really working to unify the skin tone because when you're painting something material that is supposed to be the same material all around, you want to make sure it has the same colors all around. And um, using different colors, using a different color for the neck or a different skin tone combination for the neck and then using a different combination of, of colors for the, for the torso, that's not going to work. You see this brown color you've got going on here? It's not really uh, working to prove that the skin is there. It actually looks like uh, discoloration in the skin tone. So if you just desaturate, oops, if you just desaturate the whole thing, 
you can see that pretty much the same uh, armpit uh, value is used for the stomach and you want to be able to complement that. You want to be able to have the same color here, but do you see it's not the same color used? One is a bit more green, a bit more um, orangey, and before I was a bit too pink uh, compared to it. So they're not balancing out because they're essentially, you're not using a one general full wash to unify the skin tone. So what I'll do is, <clears throat> after I showed you those corrections, the opposites of reds and stuff like that, I recommend you use, um, I'm just going to throw in my own sort of colors for the skin tone. And I did a video on this. It's available on YouTube, how to change from grayscale to color. I recommend you guys watch that if you're having trouble choosing skin tones. You'll notice that you don't need that much color in order to have color work or have the color show. you don't really need that much of a step up from grayscale it's not really that important so light source is always yellow so we choose a yellow beige skin tone I'll put that on soft light and throw it over all these areas here Okay, and you can see it's already starting to get unified because what we're doing is we're using the same yellow color for all the areas of the skin that are lit up because that's how it works. You need a color that unifies all the, the color um, of the skin because it is all skin from the top to the bottom. It's all the same material. So it can't have different color combinations. I'm also going to get the purplish red to throw over the shadows. And then I'm going to get an orange red, which I call under under dark reds, which are usually deeper orange. And place that in all the areas here that are sort of high traffic blood areas. Okay. And I'm just going to flatten the image and then go back into color. And this is what I show you guys in the tutorial. It's nothing really that new. And I'll also get a green and place it so I want to take away some of his sort of aliveness. I'll place it over some of the shadow where the shadow meets the the light just to show that he's not fully alive and he's got some some dead to him. Be careful with using reds if you want to make a character look like it's deadish because if you use too many reds it's gonna cancel that out. He's gonna look very alive. So if you want to give that sort of dead look to any character you're painting for the skin, make sure you're not having too much red in those high traffic areas. It'll it'll work against the whole concept of the dead creature. Okay. The next I what I'll do is I stop using color picker. I stop using color mode and then I start unifying some of the shades here so they can be a little bit more um, consistent. You also need some light here. I showed you this before. <clears throat> Nothing new. Sorry about using my soft brush. It sort of gets the job done. Um, better than textured. I don't have time to fix all the texture errors. <clears throat> okay, and then after that I sort of get a dark version of that red again. And I just brush it over. And don't worry about losing the dark spots because we'll just reinforce those later on. Remember, you don't need that much to show that something is dark. You just need to get the basic mid-tones. You see we have no real dark spots, but when you when you sort of grayscale it, you know where to put them. You just put them in those areas of the armpits, a little bit under the around the ribs, and a little bit on the um, below the ribs. But we're adding the color right now. 
and desaturate it actually. I'm going to shift it to green as well because I want that dead look. And this is like this is the digital thing. This is how it works digitally. If if you don't know your tricks around Photoshop, it's going to be very difficult for you to uh, manipulate the level color levels and the types of colors you have. You have to be able to sort of pick up um, the whole Photoshop thing pretty quickly. Look up your tutorials, how to edit colors on Photoshop. Get your get your fingers used to pressing on Control U. Um, get familiar with your keyboard and what it can do. Because if you guys don't have familiarity, you're going to be stumbling around with color color modes on the on the layer, and that's not enough to change the colors on Photoshop. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to choose sort of a high, intense sort of um, yellow light. And I'm just going to brush it over every area that sort of is getting light. Make sure you maintain your edges. If you lose your edges, you're losing form. If you're losing form, then it's going to look bad, and you're going to be like, why is it looking bad? Form is that, that culprit. Also have a bit of um, sort of a problem with the way you made the neck. I feel like it can be a little bit less bulky. To sort of reinforce his slender form. Sort of give him that human feeling. Maybe if you gave him like a neck and a head shape, it would work a little bit better, again, to reinforce his sort of skinny nature. And that way, the neck wouldn't be so bulbous, therefore, and, and interrupting the, um, the big shadows and therefore interrupting the form. So what we want to do is make sure we're staying as close as possible to the realism. I also get my desaturation and I desaturate completely in the dark areas enough that nearly all the color is gone to reinforce that cool tone. So he's starting to look a little bit pale, a little bit transparent. And this is all because you pick up a habit of Photoshop tools. This is not because, well of course you have to know color wheel, of course you have to know what you do when you have too much green or what you do when you have too much yellow or something. But this is all because Photoshop gives you so much control over the levels that you can literally change anything and when it comes to coloring grayscale it's, it's, it's not a matter of, it's not all knowledge, it's pretty much just technical, not all like uh, theory knowledge, it's all technical knowledge. You have to learn the Photoshop or the tool that you're, whatever, whatever it is you're using to transfer your grayscales to color. Okay, now I'm going to get sort of darkish brown and then reestablish the dark spots. So in the areas here, areas here, high clash areas. It doesn't have to be um, full dark, just enough that it makes sense. The reds you used before were a bit too much. You want to be careful. Just because it's skin. Joseph doesn't mean that it's going to be red. Skin, depending on the like, you know, the physiology depends on the kind of creature you're drawing or what what's going on. Um, the skin can be green for all for all you know, and it's green, and you think it looks red, or you think it looks like skin, but the main wash is a green wash, and so the whole wash that you used was wrong for this character because it wasn't reinforcing his his sort of dead reaper concept. And you don't want to just paint a concept just in the lines. You want to introduce the concept through the colors as well. The concept isn't limited to your lines or, or, or anything like that. It's, it's, it comes hand in hand with color, with costume design, um, with all kinds of stuff. You want to be able to make it all make sense. <clears throat> I'm also going to get my... Um, I recommend just choose one background color. Just choose one basic one and stick to it. Um, what you've chosen here is a couple and you've tried to make the background dynamic and all that. Just, just choose one and stick to it.
Let me just, because if you have too many values of grayscale, you don't know what your, what kind of room is this, what, how, what's happening in the room. Even if it's not in a room, even if your mind, in your mind and the way you designed it, he's not in a room, it's just presentation. We, as the audience, are going to see that he's in a room. <clears throat> We're like, okay, so what's up with the room? What, what's wrong with the colors? And see, now that I've balanced the grayscales, now I know what to do with his skin. Now I have a bit more control. And I know where to desaturate because oh, that, that excessive background um, grayscale, that, that, that mix of gray was really interrupting what I was trying to do here. And that is just focus on the skin and see what, what it does with that background color. See if that background color even allows a certain kind of skin to come through. And if you want to add zombie-like blush, you have to make sure you stay in the cool tones. His, his skin is dead. His skin isn't warm. Um, so if you want to add blushes, if it looks a little bit desolate to you, you can still add the blush, but the blush has to be a pink or a purple. Let me make it even more purple. Because it does have reds in there, but it's still reinforcing the dead look. <coughs> So be careful when you guys are, are trying these kinds of concepts. Think about the concept. This is what basically what I meant by planning. Uh, this is what I mean whenever I say planning. I mean, think about what colors you're going to be using to reinforce, again, the design. That's all I really mean by planning. Not too much because you still have that green taking over the entire image. You don't want to add so much red that you're starting to hurt the audience's eyes because there's just too much clash going on. You want to take it easy, not throw too much on it. And then finally, your edges. Um, it's choose whether you want to keep the outlines or not. It's At this point, you're painting realistically, so you want to choose whether or not you're going to keep the lines going to keep the lines is going to be a graphic choice. It's going to be, uh, for the graphics I mean, of the, of the image, um, like cut and paste or, or, or collage kind of thing where you have solid colors and, and lines and, and the typography and all that stuff, which is what you were trying to do. You had the writing there and everything. But for character design, they're not hiring you to make a nice spread character spread. They're hiring you to design the character. They're hiring you to think about the colors and the um, and the costume and the and the props. Any stuff that he's holding. So get rid of these lines and watch what happens when I get rid of these lines. Watch what happens to the um, to the form. It's just going to emerge and we see all the areas automatically. I see there was a big part missing here in the uh, in the arm, like a big chunk of his anatomy wasn't wasn't really working. And I'm just going to lasso out the further end of his um, design sort of over here and gray it out a little bit because it is taking a touch too much attention away. The background shouldn't have as much contrast as the foreground. Good job on the on the um on the the wraith or whatever it's called. A wreath. What is it? What is it called? The shingle? What's this thing called? What's this weapon called? Sh scythe? Scythe, yeah. Scythe, damn. Um so I'm going to decrease the contrast on that by getting a <clears throat> just the background color of the gray and throwing it over because I don't want to have as much contrast over everything as, as the face is. The face is, the head piece is the, is the high point here, I mean is the focal point. We don't want to make everything as contrasty as that. The feathers and the head is pretty much what we're working with here. And we haven't added colors to everything yet, just the skin. Now let me add just a touch more anatomy to the to the body here. I'll show you. When we remove the lines, do you guys did you guys see the difference? Hmm. 
just a touch more. I don't know why my brush isn't working. Force the edge again. Oops. Oh my god, I didn't welcome you guys. I'm so sorry. Uh, welcome 123 Alfie, Anime, and those Carlo, Domino, Gaj. Jacob, Jewel, um, Koro, Mitsia, Michelle, Nilana, Luriel, Oreo, Red Mystery, Seraphim, Starch, and Zero. Welcome everyone who signed, who hasn't signed in as well. <clears throat> and now what to do is you have high contrast in the lower part of the body and you have low contrast in the higher part. You want to also have the same sort of level going on here. Again, just gonna get the edges to be clean cut. So who wants to do a hangout after class? If you guys want, just let me know. I'm also going to use the um, same color I used here for the bottom of the ribs and then unite it with that part of the area here of his, just all the shadows just get that big pink cool tone. And then of course the contrast is decreased the lower, the further away you get from the light source. Remember the closer you are to the light source the more contrast there is further away the less contrast. Okay. And then finally we're going to stop this um, painting of the skin and then jump into painting pretty much everything else. So I'm going to get a green yellow that's fully desaturated almost. And I'm just going to throw that greenish yellow over the skull. Just a lot and then erase what I don't need depending on like matching it with the skin. Remember you have to make all the colors match as if they're all coming out of the same light source. So again use your Photoshop tools to figure it out. So right now I'm using the control U which is the hue saturation. You can control any aspect of the color, the shadow, the saturation, and the, and the actual ID of the color whether it's blue or yellow. I'm just trying to find that good balance. And there I found a good shade. And then I just get the same yellow I used on the skin. The same skin tone light source color. And I'm going to use that same color on the skeleton because that unifies the light source. You see me when I paint sometimes I have this light source color here. I use that for everything. I use that for the clothing. I use that for the hair. Because that's how you unify an object. That's how you unify objects with the same light source. You use the same light source color. Just the same exact thing, just drop tool it and use it on everything. Use it to, to wash over everything. Because that's how you get a unified light source. Okay? Remember that. Make a palette on the side of, of, of colors that you will be using. That's also planning Oreo. 
you make a palette on the sides of all the colors that you'll be using so that you remember to use them. You don't go around all over the canvas looking all over this looking for colors. You have them right here. You don't need this anymore once you choose your colors. Okay, and just use that same thing. You have a bit of a, of a weird thing going on with his eye. I recommend you have some sort of eyebrow thing going on and then just shade away part of the eye that's in the shadow. Just like that. So it seems like it's inside. And then get the light source color and place it over the part that is not inside. And then decrease your brush or move uh, move in closer to the, to the canvas, you see how zoomed out I was, and start making smaller shapes, break the big shapes into smaller shapes, just like this. Eyeball it, sort of. It's, it's, you can invent your own anatomy in this case. You're the concept artist, you're the designer, so you can pretty much just take it where you want to take it. I'll send this to you after to see if you want to play along with it. And now that I've added the colors on the skull, I feel like the skin is still too saturated. Like I feel like it still can go even lower. And again, it's a relationship between all the units and all the colors of the canvas. You have to make them match. So it could be a lengthy process. And you just have to be patient and wait it out. And then I'm going to get the highlight color, which is the white. I never use white, but when it comes to skeleton, um, there is a touch that's needed sometimes. Almost a bluish, a bluish white. It'll look blue because it's so white compared to all the cool colors. But I'm just going to be adding it on just the major high points of light here. And I'm also adding it onto the skin tone and onto the ribs and onto the top of the skull, which is definitely going to get more light on it. Now that I zoom out, I see that the light needs more, the top needs more light on it. Okay. No. Okay, so now I'm going to establish my core shadows. If you don't have core shadows, you don't have anything. Um, core shadows prove that light source exists. So I'm going to throw a bunch of shadows here on the skeleton. And on the head. And just generally over everything here. I see a lot of typing. I see a lot of messages moving along. Are you guys paying attention? Okay. You guys are? Okay. It's good to hear. Alright, so now that that's done, I'm going to get my desaturation tool, which is the sponge, put it on desaturate, and just brush over everything that I feel like is still too red. A little bit on the skull. Actually, going to break the, some of the smaller pieces into bigger pieces, just like that. It's good to get a reference. It's good not to just half-ass it. Still establishing some core shadows here. You might want to add some sort of detail here, maybe like some weird muscle stuff. Some sort of, it's like some sort of abomination or something.
Okay, and I'm just going to keep desaturating. Again, you don't need that much color to have color. You don't need it to be like hyper red. Sometimes just a little bit goes a long way. Getting some color on his knuckles. His feet should generally be grayed out. They shouldn't be that um, colored. And now you can just choose anything as long as you stay within this color palette. Now you can just choose like, uh, yeah, this taupe color here for the um, for the bandages. Not much is needed, but now it's colored and choose which color you want. Just make sure you go back down into the um, color palette. So if you want it to be that pukey, green, dirty color, just make sure you like decrease the saturation back to match what's going on. If you have any hyper colors, it's not going to match unless you bring it down. So if he's got like blue ca bandages, then you got to bring it down in order for it to match. See how low I'm bringing it just so that it can match. <clears throat> so it's really up to you where you want to take it. If he does have reds, which are really difficult to work with sometimes in desaturation because they desaturate very strangely. If he's got like red, red, um, red feathers, it still looks half okay when you're using a, a saturated red that isn't from the same saturation point, but using a different color mode might also um, help in adding that in. So you have to think about where the shadow is, of course. Erase away what part is in shadow. Because where there is no shadow, there is no saturation. and bring it down. And this is because we've chosen a background color that you have to make sure everything matches. And after this, it's just adding in more detail, adding in any other kinds of um, detail that you want to add in, I guess. Um, different skeletal structures if you want to play around with the skeleton. But basically, this is, this is, this is basically, you're painting in grayscale, but you're using one color, so it's monochromatic. And if you do need to add color, make sure all the colors move up at the same time, move up in a very similar way. That you're not, um, all the colors are coming from like a different part of the canvas or a different part of the color wheel. Sorry. It's going to desaturate a little bit more. Save. And I'll show you the before and after now. Before. Do you see how all the colors that you chose are from like a completely different part of the canvas? Um, you had these super pink skin tones that weren't really working to complement the concept that you're going for. And after that you can, if you want more um, contrast, just play with the levels. Again, you can, there's so much you can do. Let me, uh, there's so much you can do if you know how to use Photoshop. Damn it. They really need to work on their wand tool. <clears throat> okay. If you want to increase the contrast, you can. And that's the power of working digitally. Um, you're playing uh, playing around with all the different tools that are, are allowing you to control the colors until something fits. And if you want to change the color completely of the entire image, choose the wash that you want to work with because it's pretty much still grayscale, but it does have color. It does pass as colored because he is dead. And it just happens to be this kind of concept that we're working with today. If she was a sort of anime music princess, it would be very different colors we're choosing. There is so much that you can do to play around with the canvas and add some color. This is one that uh, Peter Moorbacher uses a lot. Uses a lot. I actually found out which one he uses. This is one after he grayscales, he throws this color over top. 
and then he gets um, soft light or something gets the highlight color and the color just keeps getting more and more advanced after that and he just keeps adding layers and layers on top of each other until he gets that sort of Peter Moorbacher look okay so it's just about knowing how to work with Photoshop <clears throat> All right, so I'll send this back to you. Uh, be careful when you're jumping into color. Again, uh, planet, it's part of the uh, concept. Okay, Oreo? It's not just in the drawings. It's not just in the shading and painting. But I am so fucking proud of you, Oreo. Like, you've come so far. Before, you used to have these really, like, um, non-dynamic, non-3D side view, solid side view images of... of um, of your of your concept and now you're actually rotating it like before it was really Egyptian like you only ever saw the side view of um, wait, let me see how oh, it doesn't work anymore <clears throat> like you used to have like only the side view of the monster and then you had like you were trying to make it 3d now you're actually rotating now we're seeing the other side now we're seeing these other parts of the dimension now you're using references um, um, <laughs> yeah, well, that's what, well, that's what you were doing before, and now you're getting better, um, absolutely getting better, and I'm really proud of you, I'm really proud that you're jumping not only into, into, into shading and three-dimensional shading, but you're jumping into color as well, and you're improving really fast, um, if you feel like you don't, you shouldn't plan it, because your inspiration tap is going to be, um, clogged, so don't plan it, but um, but if you feel like uh, you you should be having a little bit more planning after this, then then start adding a little bit more planning. Meaning the colors should be planned, and um, and all that. Now I'm just starting to render blindly because I see these pretty feathers. I just want to render a little bit more form into them. <coughs> But yeah, soups, soups, proud of you, man. Sorry, just give me a second. I just gotta do this. My decrease and increase buttons aren't working anymore. Sorry. Okay, I'm done. I'll send this back to you. <laughs> All right, let me reset Photoshop. Okay, who's sending me stuff? Um... My internet has been such a shit stain on the face of the planet lately. I don't know why. It's so bad. Okay, let me just get jewels. Okay, jewel. So this is a pretty early stage. Um, at this point, you're going to start having to focus on edges. When you're painting realistically, form is, is created by many different things. It's created by cast shadows, core shadows, and edges. Um, and when we're looking at this painting here, what we need are some edges. So. Let me put my glasses back on. <clears throat> so we need an edge here for the side of the breast. Let me zoom out. Because it's not everything is this painted, is not is not is this blended in a human body. The human body has edges, it has valleys, it has bones underneath. And what we need to prove that. are some edges and interruptions in the in the gradual tone. The skin is soft, but what happens is it gets it has a really solid understructure which is the skeleton. And that's what makes it have edges. I got the ribs and etc. 
etc. I'm not really familiar with the reference we used, so I'm going to just add in my own sort of visual library. Hello, Baloo. Just to try to find these edges in here. Got the ribs also sticking out. Got the shadow under the ribs. To zoom out more. <coughs> I'm just going to grayscale the whole thing because it wasn't grayscaled. And find a couple more edges here. Base of the breasts also needs some some way to determine that it's it's not part it's 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 a different sort of volume. couple more details needed as well. If this was an early stage, this will show you, I guess, what to do with your next stage. But remember not to overblend, because if you overblend, <coughs> you blend sort of like the transition from elbow to arm, or you're not going to have an elbow anymore. You're just going to have forearm and upper arm. The elbow is really bony and really, really structured. So if you don't have an edge to represent that sort of boniness, then we're going to lose the form. So something like this here, it's got a lot of a lot of edges and edge work that's needed. The side of the arms, the side of the of the body, sudden protrusions of the of the rib cage. Those are all part of the edge system. 102.5 the edge. It's a rock channel in Toronto. <clears throat> Is it 102.5, 102.1? I don't know. It's a radio channel. And since the light source is coming out from the side, some of this here, I need to zoom out. We'll get some of that light. This area here, this side of the breast. And these edges are all helping us sort of bring out what's soft and what's not soft. And what's soft helps what's not soft look not soft. So the bones complement the, the, the flesh and the flesh complements the bones. And that's basically what a body is, sort of a balance of both. <clears throat> I disconnected. What's soft that isn't soft will be soft and the soft and the soft. <laughs> I was saying um, areas that aren't soft complement what's not soft. So flesh complements the bone and the bone complements the flesh. So if you guys have enough edges, you don't need to over render in the, um, in the soft areas because having the edges is going to make the soft areas look gradual tone and soft. <clears throat> also, the nipple needs to be relocated. Nipple relocation surgery coming up. What happens when a woman stretches her arm? If you're a girl, you know this. The nipple also stretches along <laughs> for the ride. And so you have to show that sort of... It's basically like having any tattoo on a piece of skin. Guys would know that too, guys. Um, have having a tattoo on the skin, if you stretch the tattoo, the tattoo also stretches, or the stretch the skin, the tattoo also stretches. You also need a shadow for the nipple. And everything about the nipple, let me just give you a little lesson on the nipple. Everything about the nipple is exactly the same way you would shade it on everything else. So the, 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 the disc part of the nipple has a light source and a shadow. The nipple part of the nipple <laughs> has a light source and a shadow, and that's just pretty much like everything is cast. Like all the light spots near the top, all the dark spots near the bottom, and that's pretty much it. Nipples aren't that sort of complicated. It's like having <laughs> so awkward. Um, it's like having a bowl or a plate, and then having the bowl on the plate, like having a bowl of rice on the plate, and you're shining a light. Some of the bowl, some of the plate will have light, some of the side of the rice will have light, but all over here will be in shadow. You're going to have your main, your core shadow first. So when you want to paint a nipple, okay, you're going to have to have your core shadow. 
write this down. All right, so half the nipple is going to be in shadow. Then you're going to have the upper part of the nipple, which is the nipple part. That also has a coarse shadow. And then you're going to have to have the light part and the light part of the nipple. And that part has a highlight and that part has a highlight. And look, it's a nipple! Woo! I'm going to get in so much trouble with my family. <laughs> I guess the rag you you sodomite. <clears throat> it's a Pokeball. <laughs> but did you guys get that lesson? Not trying to be controversial or anything. It really just depends on where the light source is and how the nipple is 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 situated. <laughs> I know a lot of your pervs here you like to paint nipples, I'm joking. <laughs> Okay, shadow, shadow. I need to zoom out because I'm starting to look retarded. <clears throat> okay. And of course, what you need to do to get form is heighten the contrast. So, we need to start making shadows darker and areas lighter. So, this whole part here doesn't really speak to me. What I'm going to do is get a mid-tone sort of in there somewhere. Because again, the light source is coming from the side, so this part of the boob should be um, dark, and it's also casting a shadow on the rest of the body. So remember, guys, this is what, this is how to paint good. When you have an object, the object has its shape, so its edge, so its mid-tone and edge, all right? It has a light, it has a core shadow, which meaning the, the shadow on the object, and it has a cast shadow. All right, it's got a light part, and it's got a highlight. This is just all it is, guys, and then make sure that your edges are sharp which is what I did with Julius. Just make sure that your edges, you know, if it's like a some sort of real hula hoop thingy majiggy, I don't know, like uh, some sort of instrument, then you just reshape those shadows to match the instrument, and that's it. You know, that's really all it is. That's what painting is. Just finding where these, where your light source is, what it's doing to the object, what the object's edges are, where its core shadow is, depending on its shape and what's casting its shadow on, and is the shadow taking the shape of the object it's casting it on. That's it, man. That's art in a nutshell. Okay, so we just need... <clears throat> some harder edges for the elbow. Show me that the elbow structure is... solid. part of the arm is going to be actually part of the armpit is going to be in light and part isn't I need a reference I can't, I can't free, freestyle all of this. Okay, and the shadow of the arm on the body. And then the edge here of the breast where it stops being a breast and starts being the collar or the diaphragm. So we need an edge here. An edge is like an outline, but it's, it's bigger. It's like a really fat outline. Only part of this boob is going to get light because a lot of shadow is being thrown on it. And this whole light that I put here is all wrong. Okay, so that's pretty much what it is. It's finding the edge and figuring out where you need those 
where you need areas where you need to blend and where you don't need to blend. Okay. All right, that's it. I'm done. No, I'm not. It's just not looking right. All right, there we go. Um, so I'll show you the before and after. I'm gonna try to be zoomed out. Maybe you guys can't see. Actually, really low res, but before. After. Do you see what happens when you determine where the edges are? You already had the whole thing in. You know, you already had the whole shades in. Um, <clears throat> uh, what's going on? Mitty, if she doesn't want to show the um, the reference, you don't have to pressure her. I almost lost all my information the other day too. Yeah, one v one, fight IRL. So, Jewel, do you get um, do you get what happened here? And if you want to even up the form even higher, you just increase the contrast. Um, so. You get some super high no man's land colors and you throw them in there, in there, in there, all across the side here. And then you, excuse me, and then you increase the shadows in here, in here, and that's it. 